born into a world full of wonder and amazement, we all must realize the inevitability that someday everyone will die. But what is waiting for us on the other side? Is there a proverbial life? Will all our dead relatives be there to greet us? Or do our souls float around the cosmos waiting to recognize something familiar? Some resemblance of the life now left behind. With this documentary, we hope to if not answer some of these questions. At least show evidence of something else out there. Possibly another realm of existence. Can we hear you on the other side? When I was a child, I was probably three or four years old, and I had an experience that I told my mother about the next day, or, well, actually, it was a couple weeks later, and uh, I, had, I asked her, I told her, I want to go back to that place where we went, and she, she was going, what place? And I, so I described this place where we had been, where I had been, and uh, she was just baffled. The thing was, after I grew up and started um, realizing I was a little bit different than other people, I started studying quite a bit, and I, I now realized that what I, I had done was um, what they call astral travel or astral projection at a very early age. And then uh, again, by, by the time I was about 13, I had a near-death experience and actually crossed into the light and went into the light and then came back. I was in a coma for about three days and my body should have been dead. During this very profound experience, I came out of my body, I could see my body laying on the floor, and then I went into this, I actually didn't go into light, it was like I was the light and the light was with me and there was another consciousness in the light. It was a pretty amazing experience, but it seemed like after that experience when I came back and I was, um, at that point, you know, I was being raised in a Baptist church and uh, very strict Christian church and I knew at that point that something wasn't quite right with uh, what I was being taught after that so I left the church and started um, well it's been a <laughs> long long journey of I've done the theosophical study I've studied theology um, physics science all types of different philosophies and comparative religion and tried to, to find out what happened uh, when I went all that out of my body on that near-death experience. And uh, I think it did enhance my uh, psychic ability after that experience. I came back and it seemed like I just intuitively knew things other people couldn't tune into. I could see things. I could see beings. Then after I, I started the paranormal research, my family doesn't laugh at me anymore, I can just say that, because I uh, set out on a journey to document the things I had been seeing and hearing and experiencing and let other people know that this indeed, there's a whole other realms and universes out there that we don't know anything about, but some people can tune into these. There's several other sides. And what we call uh, the haunting level is also called a bardo region. I call it the bardo region. In Tibetan, the, the Tibetan lamas, ha, that's the word they use for this area. And this is where, uh, let's say a person, their consciousness leaves and they're afraid to go cross on over into the light because perhaps they haven't been as nice as they should have been. Some of them indeed are pretty evil. And um, so they, they they're usually don't cross into the light and go on because they're of fear or attachment. They may be attached to uh, something about the location they were in. They may be waiting for a loved one. For some reason, they don't go on and they're stuck. And then when they cross into the light, when you go on into the light, there's several different uh, other areas and levels at that point where you can go to. Each, each place is a learning experience, I'll just put it that way. That's why what we're all here for is to learn. Our consciousness is tuned into this reality. What we know as this life is our reality or our frequency. So if you imagine like a radio and, and we're tuning it to say 107.7 right now. And But there are many, many, many millions of other frequencies actually going on at the same time. So if we can tune into those frequencies, there'll be a different experience, maybe a different landscape.
uh, just a whole different area. There's also these frequencies that bleed over, like um, in the most of the Bardo regions or the haunting regions are going to be areas that are very close in frequencies to ours, so, there's, so they're kind of bleeding over into our, our frequency or our reality. Electronic voice phenomena, or EVP, is a mysterious event in which human sounding voices from an unknown source are heard on recording tape. The mysterious voices are not heard at the time of the recording. It is only when the tape is played back that the voices can be heard. The recorder I use, my favorite is the it's a little RCA digital audio recorder. It's kind of an older model. It doesn't have downloadable folders, but I like it the best. You're in a room, there's two females. We hear a male voice. That's 100%. You know there was no other male in the room. And there's this voice coming through, and that's what I, the voices are what I, I term in my language, uh, I just call it non-local beings. And that what that means is that they're here, but they're not really here in the physical. Monitors are kind of confusing. While you're going through the tapes, you'll start getting these voices, and they're almost like giving you a little pointer. And they, they usually come through in, in a different tone. They have a more monotone quality or robotic sound of their voice. But they're, they're almost always either announcing that someone's coming through, they're, they're organizing. But what they do is they do what I do, but they're on the other side. They're in a different frequency. They were having a lot of paranormal activity at the old Capitol Hill Hospital. Uh, this person had bought the building and they were renovating it and they were having all kinds of experiences. Someone had been pushed off a ladder and another one had been pushed down the stairs. They were seeing apparitions, um, all the classic, you know, paranormal activity they were, they were experiencing. So I called Debbie and and uh, she said, yeah, come on out and check it out. And that was the first time we went out there and uh, we captured a lot of EVP out of the basement area and uh, some of the floors on that building. Uh, we determined it to be all around haunted for several reasons. We experienced kinetic activity which is where an object moves of its own volition with no recognizable force moving it. I saw an apparition form, full-bodied apparition form, right before we had kinetic activity. Something there? I thought so. Did you hear that? Testing. Testing. Who said that? Okay. With the monitors. Oh wow. Good job. Wow. It came through pretty quick. Okay, I want that on record. Okay, I'm freaked out. Okay, okay. okay. that was definitely guys in testing, testing. Right, that's the monitors that come through that help. The negative ones, the truly really negative ones, that we also tend to capture them lower into the ground, like underground. I'm not sure why that is, but it's a fact that a lot of the really negative voices we get will be uh, in a basement or underground in some type of a hole. And, and it's also well known that, that the different magnetic levels will fluctuate um, either above ground or below ground. It could have something to do with that. Where they're, they're drawn to a certain magnetic field where they are trapped. We have noticed that there, are any place where it's abandoned, where there's been some type of a satanic worship, focus is on the negative. It, it opens up a, a or sets up a frequency of negative in, in that location. What about Black Bear Cemetery? That would be one of those locations. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be one of those. Um, uh, just upon entering that, that many, many, many people have gone to that location and done some kind of cult rituals where they've tried to open up things and do things and um, experience things that uh, have brought uh, negative energy into the whole site and attracted the dark, what I call the dark ones. So. <laughs> it's growling.
whatever it is. We don't know what it is. Some kind of a hissing animal. The video of the animal jumping down and attacking us, and then we can play it on Animal Planet <laughs> instead of Ghost Hunter. Okay, there is some kind of a animal up in here. Okay, does he go through first? <laughs> Where is that coming from? Sounds like below. Something. Is it outside the window? It's okay. Okay, let's try to move on. It's okay, honey. It's not going to hurt you, okay? Oh, I know. Okay. The Starwind house is would be a good one where I feel like the voice that we got on th that tape, the White Wolf voice, was what I call a created energy. And again, in, in the Tibetan... I always refer to them because they're very adept at, at the other frequencies, the other worlds, and uh, they, they basically, for thousands of years, studied this phenomenon, and uh, I take them very seriously. And what they, they say is that uh, if you focus your mind strong enough and long enough on, uh, say, an imaginary friend, <laughs> and uh, you keep doing this over and over, you actually create an imaginary friend. And this imaginary friend, once it's created, the only catch is they're really hard to uncreate. And they can only be uncreated by the person who created them. So they're called tulpas. There's another type of a being that's created, energy, it's called tulku. And tulku can survive uh, the, uh, the creator's death and actually pass into another being. That's called a tulpa. And we did get one of those at the Starwood house. The gentleman that used to live in the house, of, uh, which I found out later, um, thought he was a werewolf and focused this energy quite a bit on the fact that he was indeed a werewolf. She probably wanted to do that though, huh? Hmm. Uh, this is all stuff I haven't unpacked. Okay. Oh, this is a uh, flagstone ultra thing. Coffee table? That's a coffee table, I'd say. It was a media room. Yeah. It's a table. <laughs> Padded walls. <laughs> That is actually the entrance to the stone room. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Rob told me about yeah. that. To the what room? The stone room, or the tiger room, down the temple. Mm -hmm. And this is the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It a, looks like a drawing of a house, child's drawing of a house. But it has spiked feet, and um, I mean, that's what I see. I don't know what uh -huh. you might see. Well, what's interesting is it's on the inside. It's like somebody was kept in there. Yeah. Ew! Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. It's a dead yeah. lizard exactly. of the skeleton yeah. of a... Oh! It does! The full skull, mate. Eye socket. Mm-hmm. The mandible. Oh, the loss. Yeah. That freaked me out, though. I mean, I figured if there was anywhere that you know, was negative or needed to be cleansed or whatever, that, and there's a closet up there. But you know what? That's where everybody goes. All the kids. When you're up there, you really don't want to leave. <laughs> you just want to sit there. It's a minute. Well, this was probably the opening down right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would like at this time to, uh, call any and all of those who have uh, been present in this home over the years to uh, the space where we are now in the bedroom upstairs. I want you to come in here with us. also like to again ask the monitors and the technicians on the other side to help facilitate the session and help assist those that come through. Was she your friend? Do you know why you stay in this room or in this house? Do you stay in this room or in this house? Okay. 
Right here. <laughs> So somebody here with us, could you please uh, come over to the door? That is the door we came in. Oh, good job! What? Absolutely perfect. Could you do that again? We got some. Whatever you may believe, the evidence is out there. You never know what's going on around you unless you really pay attention.